Hey, everybody. Thanks for once again joining our weekly ecosystem office hours. I'm your host, Jinx, and we are joined by not just the best and brightest in the pocket community, but damn near all of it these days. Um, we have a, a very tight call, so I'm going to do things in a slightly different order just so that we can move into the meat of the call uh, early on. Uh, Grow folks, do you have any uh, gateway updates you want to kick us out? Real-time data is now available in the portal on the Insights and Logs page. Um, next up, real-time billing. Beautiful. Anything else there? No? Okay. And I don't see Blade on the call, so I don't think that uh, Nodis is with us today. Um, in that case, I'll go ahead and shift over to Zach. Uh, any broader community updates you want to put out? Uh, yeah, I mean, I got a couple today. Uh, calling out that we were having some some node issues uh, in the last day. So if your wallet or a wrap pocket transfer wasn't working, um, definitely open a ticket in the Discord and let us know. Um, I I'm not sure if that's resolved, Fred. I don't know if you have an update there. Uh, it, it does seem that the turbulence on the network has stabilized. Uh, I was using the wallet pretty uh, aggressively last night. So, uh, yeah, I think that node stability is back. Great. Yeah, thank you so much, Fred. So if you are having any issues, definitely open a ticket and let us know, and we'll, we'll make sure we get that troubleshot for you. A um, couple of updates on marketing stuff. So... Uh, ads is starting to do the the weekly calls. So those are happening on Thursdays. Um, it's 6 a.m. Pacific or 9 a.m. Eastern because she is in Europe. So those are going to be ongoing and regular. I think tomorrow is going to be into the Gatewayverse. So um, make sure you tune into the Twitter space. I'll drop it in the link in chat here. And that kind of um, sets up a builder's call, which is going to be happening on May 2nd, where we're going to get um, a little more technical updates from the gateways themselves. So um, Nodis, Porters, DevDAO, Liquify, they're going to join us and, and give us a little update on what they've been working on. Uh, and then last but not least, obviously, we have a, a pretty important vote up right now for creds. Um, we also have one for the retro PGF and uh, OnCode. So make sure you vote for those um, after this call if you haven't already. I think we have most of the, the PNF team here to help un unpack any questions that people have, but um, really excited to get those passed through. So. I think that's the majority of my updates. Okay, cool. And and I, I do want to put out there in regards to node stability, please, 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 please run full archival pocket nodes, not unpruned nodes. Uh, getting good data back has as, as, uh, uh, been an issue lately. And I'm going to be working on some, some QoS um, dashboard type stuff around um doing some health checks on pocket nodes themselves um to see if we're getting errors back from those nodes or not and probably publishing that data in some kind of a way so please please full archive nodes uh and also um porter sasquatch I, I don't know if you guys are at a point where you want to start giving gateway updates yet but if you have anything you'd like to share uh, by all means all right Thanks. Uh, thanks for the shout out. Um, we're currently heads down building and nothing more to uh, display, but we will definitely keep you posted when that comes about. Up. Sure thing. And uh, feel free to reach out and like DM me uh, when you, you know, are, are at a point where you guys have some regular updates to give and I'll make sure you're part of the, uh, the cycle. And last, but certainly not least, uh, from a technical perspective, uh, any protocol updates, Shane, you want to share? Hey, Jinx. Yeah, so uh, right now, uh, kind of the big thing going on is they're doing end-to-end uh, -end testing. Um, this is really where all the parts that uh, are needed to run a public testnet where all actors are represented. Um, it's uh, uh, the team right now is currently uh, kind of putting everything together. It was it was actually mentioned. It's kind of like a, uh, kind of like a car where you have all these manufactured parts, and then you've got to put them all together to make sure that everything uh, is working as it should, and and uh, you know find out where there might need to be tweaks or or bugs. And so right now is kind of like the full holistic end-to-end -end testing. Uh, the private test net 
uh, helped a lot with figuring out uh, a lot of the tooling to allow people to deploy things. Uh, but the end-to-end -end testing is also on, you know, making sure these modules are working together, right? Because Cosmos SDK mm -hmm. is uh, primarily all these modules, so make sure all the modules are all working together uh, the right way, um, and we're getting all the right outputs, uh, and then also then tying that into the feedback that uh, was gotten from the testnet earlier. So anyways, yeah, really the final bringing everything together is primarily the main focus uh, for the for the team. And so uh, it's, a, it's exciting. It's cool to see. Uh, really seems like some great progress has been being made with it. So um, yeah, overall, excited about that. We're still shooting for uh, a launch of public testnet within two weeks. Um, and if there's, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give a update next week if, if uh, uh, there's gonna be any changes to that, but at least for right now, things are progressing, progressing nicely. So good things on that front. Beautiful. Uh, kind of also to, to uh, touch on kind of a technical level as well with, uh, I don't know, uh, there've been a number of people that have mentioned having issues with node wallet uh there was actually a uh there was actually an update that needed to be pushed to the rat pocket bridge so that update has been pushed so it's now all working uh and then there was uh there as you mentioned before jinx there have been some challenges with uh uh pocket uh pocket nodes uh trying to serve relays but they're not uh, archival and so uh if people are having an issue with node wallet they can reach out to me and I can provide them with a alternative endpoint that will allow them to uh, access uh, everything they need to um, if there's any kind of issue with uh, uh, folks not running uh, pocket archival properly. So uh, anyway, so if there's any issues or if you hear of anyone that has any issues, just have them reach out to me, DM me. Um, I can set them up with an endpoint and actually last month, uh, as part of our upgrade to Node Wallet last month, we added the ability to uh, put in your own custom endpoints. So it's really simple to do, really easy. It's right there in the settings, and I can provide an endpoint if uh, the default one is having issues. So, anywho, just wanted to make that uh, make that note, kind of put everyone on blast that if you run into any issues, just give me a DM. Yeah, um, Fred has a um, a question in chat. I would love for y'all to take that. Uh that conversation of DMs uh, in figuring that out since we've got a lot to cover today. Um, and Dermot has uh, liquidity and W pocket updates. So if we could get those. Yeah, sure. And I'll, I'll keep it quick. Um, on the liquidity side, so contract has been signed with the, the first market maker and we're just in the final stage of onboarding. So transferring over the pocket and they're just finalizing their processes to be able to just support all of the exchanges where, where pocket is so hopefully they said that will be pretty 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 soon um so i guess there's probably a window of maybe 24 to 72 hours before we start to see the impact of that in the market so that, that that's cool I'll, I'll keep i mean if, if nothing has changed by the end of the week or if i see any delay for whatever reason i'll give people a heads up that's, that's in the process of onboarding so there's been some contracts and then kind of pocket moved over and then just kind of their systems um, and processes to get going really um and then on wrap pocket i realized i wasn't on the call last week um but even in the, over the course of me announcing saying that we want to do a um launch another pool on arbitrum to provide a low cost easy option we actually throughout that process we're receiving a lot of requests for base um which i understood it just required um more work uh, and maybe a little bit more time however one thing i certainly hadn't realized hadn't been said to me um so cogently at least was the fact that um being on base provides a really good off-ramping solution for for all those americans who don't get access to the current centralized exchanges so that really does trump arbitrum at least in the short term um there are some potential you know migration difficulties that we can handle post shannon but um and so post shannon we will be able to bridge to all the chains very easily using ipc or hyperlane or whatever solution we choose so yeah long long story short we are we've started the process to launch on base we submitted a pr uh, end of last week thanks shout out to murdad who did the work for that and we're chasing up with all our contacts 
within the base team to expedite that process. Um, essentially, there's a whitelisting process for all new assets, so you appear on the bridge. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to, um, yeah, wrap pocket wouldn't appear in the UI. Um, so once that's done, we will look to launch a pool using Arrakis, um, uh, yeah, Uniswap v3 pool. It won't be incentivized because we want to keep this as simple as easy and easy as possible, but it will provide that low cost option. And yeah, of course, that can grow with uh, demand and use uh, on base. And then we have a good presence there, which, you know, is a, is a super exciting ecosystem. Beautiful. I'm super happy to hear it. And uh, that's those are both great uh, updates that will have significant joy uh, in the community upon hearing. I know that uh, so it sounds like liquidity is going to be in play most likely by the end of the week and uh, that we've got a strong plan to move towards base. All right, so wrapping up all, all those updates, let's move into uh, the, the meat of this particular call today. There has been a ton of conversation around the CREDS proposal, and it's been up for voting for some days now, but it seems like um, some of the debate around it has has gotten even stronger over the last few days. And and really just a, a greater sense of, of how well the proposals understood uh, at large. So we wanted to facilitate an open conversation today uh, about uh, the proposal itself, what it entails, what the questions are around it, uh, and, and what the greater sentiment is. I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Jack start off if you are, uh, are you still here? Yep, there you are. Uh, I'm here, but I'm going to let Dermot start if that's all right. Um, oh, beautiful. Is yeah, it perfect. I'm going to go, I'm going to go a little bit deeper, but I think Dermot will do a better job of uh, summarizing sort of high level stuff. Okay, cool. I just wanted your time concern. So. Cool. Yeah. No, th th thank you, Jack. I, I will keep it high level and I'll um, let Jack kind of run through things in a bit more detail. Um, I, th I think Jinx, you, you said it well, I think it's great to see the, the feedback, the input, the interest. I think most communities would kill for this kind of participation. Um, so it's really awesome. Um, and yes, I'm really keen to kind of unpack, clarify, just really have a good um, discussion today. Um, and so before jumping into the detail, just, I guess, high level, um, at least from my perspective, because everyone will have slightly different takes on this. I think the two key benefits from creds over um, the existing uh, system come from automation and scale. And um, we can unpack the kind of the secondary benefits that kind of comes from that as well. And I think admittedly, it's pretty clear that having gone through the process, starting module by module, um, it's been pretty difficult for people to see all of that, even people who are really close to it, um, particularly over such a long process, right? So there's some clear um, mistakes in hindsight where things could have been a hell, of, a hell of a lot better to kind of keep reminding people of the whole coherent picture, as well as just the reminders of how each element fits in and um, how it's actually a relatively simple system once you you kind of piece it together and I, I guess the way i think about it and what the proposal is trying to do three things really it's 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 determining who gets a vote so there's going to be some changes there and um, the main one i think is the main change there is with regards to stakers those who are productively staking pocket which we can unpack a little bit later as well the second is then how those those voters actually get a vote and they vote so that's kind of really about the tech stack um how we think about civil protection um as well as the, the kind of the citizenship barrier to entry and then lastly it it's the administrative piece of once you agree that you need to make it align with the constitution so um i'll stop there and um yeah i'm really keen to hear challenges concerns have a good debate unpack everything as much as we can um and of course it doesn't end here right um but i think if this is a really good forum for this i think uh, jinx has got a great call going and there's a really good turnout tonight so I'll hand over to Jack to just go through in a little bit more detail about the current system and what's changing. I mean, this is ultimately his baby and he's closest to this. I think that'd be good to kind of set some kind of ground truths and then we can kind of yeah, hand it back over to everyone else to, to ask questions and, and lead from there. Awesome. I'll, uh, I'll try not to be too long winded as I sometimes have a habit of being. Um, and thanks, by the way, I can stay longer uh, than, than, than I said yesterday. So uh, we're good there on time. Um, so yeah, I'll just try to sort of outline a bit more detail uh, the different changes that are happening uh, with the upgrade if it passes and um, uh, how those changes relate to the existing system. Because I think understanding how it changes the existing system uh, will help to clarify some of the pieces. So uh, the first is the technology. 
um, uh, which was one of the biggest catalysts for us to to pursue this in the first place. Um, our current system relies on Discord roles, um, which means that anyone with admin powers in, within Discord has the power to grant or remove uh, trophies, um, has the power to grant or remove uh, verification status, um, and then ultimately the voter role as well. Um, once we get voting tokens in the hands of voters, that's less of a concern. Um, but f from the point uh, pre ownership of voting token uh, is not the most safe system. Uh, it also requires manual proofs uh, of, of uh, uh, different activities being completed, uh, and as well as manual assignment of roles. So as, as well as not being safe, it's also not very scalable. Um, so one underlying core component of this upgrade is to automate the existing system. Uh, we would be replacing the get verified channel where people post selfies, uh, to prove that they are a unique human, we will be replacing that with an anonymous identity solution powered by a Gitcoin Passport. And then we will be replacing uh, the Discord roles that we use, uh, which we call trophies, uh, with verifiable credentials, uh, which would be powered by Gateway. Um, and we will be implementing this technology in a modular way so that components can be swapped out if needed, uh, and also parameters of the system can be calibrated over time. So we, we're parameterizing our governance more um, uh, in the same way that the blockchain has uh, dozens of parameters that can be tweaked using uh, PUPs. Uh, governance will now have a few parameters that can also be tweaked. Uh, and if something like Gitcoin Passport ends up being surpassed by a better solution, uh, the DAO would be able to vote in uh, uh, substituting that solution uh, into the system. Um, so that's the sort of technology side. Uh, the other two major changes are, uh, our categories of changes are around updating the trophies or credentials as they would now be called. Um, and also as Dermot said, introducing a staker house. Uh, so the credentials would be uh, updated to, to make them broader, uh, a smaller set of credentials that are broader uh, based on impact um, and less uh, niche. Uh, one of the insights that we've learned over the years with the trophy system is that we have these paths that are uh, actually relatively niche uh, for a lot of people in the community. Uh, they reward specific uh, modes of participation in uh, node running or uh, being active on Twitter and, and so on. Uh, but there's uh, there's been dozens of contributors in the community that haven't yet uh, being able to obtain a vote because they can just do it in the natural course of their activities in the DAO. Um, they're having to go out of their way to do a different set of activities. We've seen uh, contributors even recently take several months just to get on board, uh, which if they're already actively contributing, if they're already active stakeholders, uh, we don't think is an ideal case. So notably, we're, the credentials that would be introduced uh, to replace the existing trophy system would not be prescribing any form of contribution. It could be technical contributions. It could be non-technical contributions. If these are um, uh, be, being paid through a socket, if these are being contributed by winning an RFP, uh, or uh, perhaps someone submitted a proposal that was approved, uh, these would all be eligible to earn a vote. Um, and then also given that we have a modular system, we will be looking to fast follow this proposal with a process uh, that involves the community of identifying other credentials that should be introduced. Uh, ideas that have been thrown out include like participating in um, uh, the DAO, uh, actively uh, voting on proposals uh, as a way to extend someone's vote uh, and, and so on, uh, which leads to the other big change with the credentials, which is that uh, they will be made more dynamic by introducing expiry. Uh, so you'll see in the proposal that we have an expiry column with 12 months uh, for most of them, and then for smaller, uh, less impactful contributions, um, uh, it would be six months or, or three months. Um, the, part, the goal with this um, relates to the original post, which talks about how our governance uh, stakeholder set is not very dynamic. 
we have a lot of people in there who have not voted in years, um, who have not been active in the community in years, uh, but still have a vote. Uh, and it doesn't feel right that uh, people that have fully disengaged from pocket uh, retain their vote, while people that are uh, very active, it takes them several months uh, to get a vote. So the expiry uh, looks to clean out the system periodically as people disengage. Um, if they continue participating in the ecosystem, they would maintain their vote. Um, and the goal would be that uh, it's not, we would be looking to find a balance where it's not uh, too much of a burden for people to have to uh, uh, refresh their vote, uh, reset the clock, so to speak. Uh, we would be looking to get to a point where uh, there are enough inclusive credentials uh, that would enable people to naturally refresh their vote without really having to think about it just by being active stakeholders. Um, the last point, and then I'll stop and open the floor, uh, is the staker house. Uh, we would be looking to recognize the main stakeholders in our network, um, the su uh, supply, uh, staking pocket, also staking rat pocket, um, and uh, demand uh, being a gateway and sending relays and paying gateway fees. The core idea here is that these are pocket's main stakeholders, um, uh, the main users of the network. Uh, they have a, a invaluable perspective to share, and they should have some say within the DAO in proportion to their skin in the game. So the more pocket they have staked, the more rat pocket they have staked. Uh, the more relays they're sending to the network, uh, they should have a proportional more share uh, or, or say on uh, within the staker house. Um, and that this would be, um, this is a perspective we've been missing. Like we have uh, several uh, large funds uh, with uh, a lot of wisdom uh, in crypto, a lot of influence, uh, placeholder, 1KX, Republic Crypto, uh, et cetera who have not really engaged in our governance because they don't have uh, any say in governance. They would have to uh, go through this uh, existing uh, path of earning a vote, which uh, they're extremely busy uh, crypto fund managers. They have a lot to share. Uh, it's hard to justify going through that process um, uh, just to be able to um, to have one vote within uh, within the system. So. We would be looking to introduce a bicameral system where we have a staker house in addition to our one person, one vote. Uh, but we want to honor uh, our roots as a one person, one vote system. Uh, we still believe strongly in the value of one person, one vote. Uh, so this staker house would be given a small 20% uh, of the overall vote, uh, which feels like a safe, uh, a safe amount to grant them uh, at the onset, uh, it, it means that the one person, one vote house can achieve an 80% supermajority without needing any, uh, any uh, cooperating votes from the staker house. Um, and then again, with the parameterization of the governance, uh, this 80-20 split that we have could be calibrated over time uh, through PUPs if the DAO got more experience of having a staker house, having nodes and gateways, being able to vote in proportion to state, and uh, decided that 20% was too much or 20% was not enough, uh, this could be calibrated over time as well. So um, I hope that was all clear, uh, but I'm going to stop now um, and open the floor for people to ask questions, give feedback. Um, so yeah, I'll pass it over to you, Jinx. Yeah, Steve had asked, uh, he's, he had some prepared questions and it asked to follow you up. So I'm going to hand the mic over to him right now. Yeah. Um, hey, for starters, I, I, I want to just start with a thank you. I know a ton of time has gone into this and um, we're in a really fortunate spot because we've got like a, a group at PNF that I think everybody trusts and uh, myself included. So I, I want to just start with a, a thank you to Jack and uh, ben and Dermot and uh, Zach and everybody else on the PNF team. Um, that said, uh, what what I keep asking myself is, how would I feel about this if it weren't Jack Dermot, uh, Ben, you know, and 
I think it's just the right way to think about this. And I'm not, I'm not lobbying either way. I'm not paid to, to do this. I, you know, I'm not doing this full time. I'm just a community member that is also a voter and gone through the previous like voting process and been around a while to, to, to see like some of the other changes that have happened um, for, for anyone on this call who, and I'm guessing it's, it's probably the majority that, that haven't read through all of this stuff. Um, I mean, there's just for this proposal, there's seven different posts over more than a year uh, with, you know, varying levels of participation in, in the comments and nobody that I can see that really has their head wrapped around it in uh, and, and myself included. And now I've logged uh, dozens of hours, literally trying to, to just get an understanding and even something as simple as you know, saying, um, like, if you had a, a proposal out there with this new system and 49 people voted, or let's, 51 people voted for it and 49 voted against it, um, you know, did the proposal pass? I, I, I can't answer that. I would put that to, to Jack or anybody else to, to try to explain just something as simple as that, you know, how you would answer it. I've gone into the, the the math and the weighting and all of that, and you know I, I can elaborate, but there isn't enough time on this call to to really hash this stuff out. Uh, and I don't think the community has has been engaged. I think what we're seeing now, in in my opinion, and if anybody disagrees, you know, please let me know. But we're seeing a delegate vote, like the people voting in favor of this. In my opinion, and and I've to, to quite a number are, are really just saying that they trust Jack and Ben and uh, you know Dermot and the rest of the team, which I think is great. I just don't think we need the voting process if that's the case. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause there. And really, all I'm asking for right now is just like a, a, a no vote, just so we can have more time to to consider this. I uh, I was the, the 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 first one when this proposal came out the very first post to ask like hey can you at least tell me when this post is going to vote because I don't do this full time I I wanted to have enough time to understand it and if you read back past like go back to pip 1 and pip 5 and there's been other attempts at at, at you know upgrading the governance system that have had issues in the past. This one is way more complex. And I'm just asking for more time. And the the vote went up. I, I was, you know, I had no warning it was going up. I, I mean, maybe there is like some cadence that I'm not aware of. So that's on me if that's the case. Um, but it, it kind of pushes you in five days to, to try to figure out everything that's happened for years, unless you've been paying attention to it the whole time, which is impossible for most people unless you're part of the PNF team and you know you're paid to do so and I'll pause there thanks for that Steve um, I think the first thing I'd like to touch on is the timing and the process um, so yeah I, I mean I appreciate that once the vote starts it feels like it's uh, a lot of time pressure um, uh, I think we've learned a lot of lessons from this process uh, we this is the this is the proposal and or upgrade uh, in our ecosystem that we probably try to give the most time to uh, for understanding, for uh, a discussion, um, which was actually the core reason for doing uh, uh, seven different governance posts over a period of several months. Like we started talking about this back in uh, August, I believe. Um, uh, and the goal was to break it down into its components and um, and help people to understand each individual component rather than trying to grasp the whole uh, uh, from 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 day one. So uh, explaining why Gitcoin Passport works as uh, the personhood module as a replacement for Git Verify and, and so on. So um, uh, definitely not our intention to make people feel uh, time pressure uh, uh, to to make this decision at the last minute. We've we tried everything we could to to socialize uh, these ideas uh, over a long period of time, uh, multiple calls, 
uh, etc. I think the lesson that we've learned is that without a catalyst like a vote to force people to to engage, um, uh, a lot of those proposals have gone uh, without as as much engagement, uh, or 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 perhaps not not having the, the 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 knowledge that this will actually be implemented if this proposal passes has 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 led to a little bit more apathy uh, in the engagement through that several month process. So. Um, I think there's lessons learned here for how to go through a process like this. This is the first time we've ever done a major governance upgrade. Uh, we knew from the beginning that uh, the stakes are high with a governance upgrade and that it's important to build consensus, which is why we did that several month process. But in hindsight, that has potentially also obfuscated uh, uh, what the, the system as a whole looks like, uh, made it harder to, to, to see the forest for the trees. Um, so we take a lot of lessons away from that. Um, uh, that, that part. Uh, Dammit, do you, do you want to jump in and add anything? Um, I think yeah, that, 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 that's all great context. I, I was going to um, maybe, I guess, maybe ask a question in response to Steve's question, because I, I think that's really touching on what seems to be one of the common um, biggest sticking points or challenges for people. And it would be good to get a few more. I think um, from what I've seen, from the conversation so far, most of the challenges or concerns seem to relate to the staker house adding complexity, which I think goes straight to Steve's point there around maybe 51 people vote, but actually because um, one of those pe people voting maybe have a bit more than or a bit less than um, the individual one person one vote votes, right? And then there's the perhaps the lack of technical paths that people have put forward um, because they're not all fleshed out yet. They will be kind of fleshed out over time, um, really hopefully being a lot being led by the community and then the the 12 month expiry for those with a vote currently. Um, so they're all meaty enough topics. I think um, the Staker House adding complexity, I think that's a really core one that I'd love to discuss and get people's thoughts on. And And for me, that really speaks to scale directly um and i i guess i'll I'm kind of painting the picture here because i think this is kind of thinking of the extreme circumstances often kind of shows i guess some of the edge cases and potential issues um and i, I guess for me looking at what the community could look like at scale there will always be more nodes right um so maybe that's fifty thousand, maybe that's a hundred thousand nodes at scale um and ideally there could be thousands of gateways but likely i imagine the number will be probably somewhere between a hundred and a thousand, at least kind of, uh, and probably only maybe a hundred gateways that are really driving, you know, the vast majority of volume, which would be amazing and uh, be a super vibrant ecosystem. And then I guess in terms of super active builders um, who are, you know, constantly contributing or maybe kind of doing major impactful contributions over the course of a year at an ecosystem that size, maybe that is a thousand as well. Maybe it's slightly less, um, a few hundred. Um, and, and so, yeah, you, with that frame in mind, I guess, and if, if we were just to keep it the current system, but to fully automate it and keep it all one person, one vote. Um, so anyone is doing the kind of, uh, has the node, is a node, is a gateway, is, is doing some impact, all the current paths, you're going to end up with nodes having 50 to 100x more power than every other stakeholder class. So once you Why is that? that because the current pathway, anyone who is sending enough relays um, or is processing enough relays, they can get a vote. And, and, and the reason most nodes don't actually have a vote right now is actually just because of the automation piece. Most people don't want to go through the friction or it's painful. I think a good example there is Wet Wealth Union has taken about five months to get their votes and it's been really painful for them. And Jack's been kind of talking to them and you know showing documents and they're super smart, engaged, really impactful. Um, community members. So they got their votes recently, but it's taken a bit of time. So, so I, I guess my point is, and I, I'd love to be challenged and love to get a take on this, is once you realize that you could have thousands and thousands of votes in one class, that's much more than all the other classes. So you'll end up with a most likely an over-representation at scale. For me, that means, okay, maybe we're thinking about it the wrong way. And that's what we've tried to do here. Of There is two classes, really. There is those who are directly driving impact um, as a technical, non-technical level. And then there are those who are core users of the protocol. Um, and that's nodes, and that's gateways, and you could argue uh, productive uses of pocket, and that's kind of 
we could remove liquidity providers, but it is a u useful use of Pocket, and representing Pocket actually does drive more utility to Pocket itself as well. But I, I think the main point for me is once you realize there will be lots and lots of nodes and actually lots of the gateways that can get votes at scale, they can outweigh every other class. So actually kind of having them in some kind of a plutocratic group or class that is actually maybe softened with a square root function or whatever else we think is appropriate makes more sense than them all having equal votes because they can really drown out that one builder who maybe is leading the whole protocol design or has done something amazing will be completely drowned out by many, many node runners. So I, I guess that's kind of the scale point for me around socially, what does this look like? Um, and so that's why the bicameral house for me makes the most sense of realizing we, we, want, we want to think about impact for individuals, one person, one vote. And then over time, maybe we represent more of the productive use of pocket, but we got to be careful with that, no doubt. I do think it's important. Our whole vision for pocket, kind of what we aligned on last year as part of our DNA is that uh, we want to enable this future where the world's most digital platforms are owned and governed by their users. Um, and our, our current system actually does try to do that. You'll look at the Nomad path, the I think the Savant path, the kind of more technical path and so on and so forth. These are trying to represent the core users of the protocol. The point is most of them don't have votes only because it's really painful and janky and manual. Um, and I think if we're saying, and if the argument is actually okay, then they may have deserved it technically, but haven't done the work, they shouldn't get it. But I, I'm, I'm pretty wary of making the argument that bureaucracy or friction should get in the way of those who've done the work. And that's really what verifiable credentials are doing, is anyone who can provably do the work and have done the work, we, we can prove that and just give them the voting power automatically. But yeah, I'll, I'll stop there because I've said a few things, but that's kind of the scale thing for me socially of the current system scaled up looks pretty strange at scale and probably results in some outcomes that we probably don't want. But knowing that you introduce a house to um, at least provide us the kind of the ability to to handle that, right? And that's an open question and that will definitely evolve over time. But the new system of it enables that by automating everything, removing the friction and then and allowing us to scale technically as well as, uh, as socially. But cool, I'll, I'll pause there. I'd, I'd like to add two things to that as well. So um, the a house is a mechanism that provides us with, uh, with uh, or it's a tool that provides us with two uh, mechanisms uh, 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 for balancing uh, governance. Uh, the first is, to be able to set strict guardrails on how much percentage of a vote a certain stakeholder classes should have. So by separating a, a stake into a separate house, we're able to say they should never exceed 20% of their vote. Uh, uh, builders, one person, one vote should always have 80% of their vote. And then the other is to be able to separate out different methods of measuring votes, um, uh, which, as, as Dermot alluded to, in a one person, one vote system, we're potentially vulnerable to uh, whichever stakeholder class has the most bodies uh, being able to overwhelm the vote. Like, uh, who, who has the most uh, uh, people within it? Uh, I know it's not builders. Uh, I know it's not gateways. Um, those stakeholder classes tend to be um, a more concentrated group of uh, people that are doing a lot of work um, uh, within the ecosystem. Um, and uh, will potentially be drowned out. So, so that's one of the. I've seen some people uh, express concerns about introducing this notion of houses uh, or a bicameral system. Uh, but I just wanted to make it clear: like the the purpose of the house is to be able to set guardrails that we can calibrate, and to be able to uh, preserve uh, different types of uh, voting structures for different stakeholder classes. Um, but I'll stop there and let someone else weigh in. Hey, hey, Jack, I have some questions on, on that. Um, so uh, the, the, I, I'm going to ask three questions, hopefully um, not, not too long. But the, like the first question is, who decides on 80-20? And, and, and who decides on which roles are more important or less important or more valuable or less valuable? And, and how do you come to consensus on that? Second question is, is the assumption that somebody who's staking is also not participating in the community in any other way? Uh, so, so like if I'm running nodes, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm just getting my vote for running nodes, but I don't care about the, you know, anything else that's happening. Is, is that the assumption that's being made? And, and actually, I'll just stop at those two questions because I want to give other people a chance to ask questions. I, I can so that's. 
the second one first, maybe, and then if, if Jack, if you want to go to the the first question on the so the current system, actually, you don't technically need to be contributing to the community in any way. So mo most of the current votes come in the node map path. Um, and to bring it up, it's 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 mostly just. Um, well, let me see if I can have it here. Um, it's it, it's just sending nodes, right? It's avoiding getting jailed. You've submitted a proof transaction. If all this was automated, all of those can, nodes would have anyway. Uh, Dermot, can you can you reference one person because we're all docked that you think is voting right now that doesn't participate in the community other than just running nodes? Um, but but I'm, I'm what I'm trying to say is. Technically, I, I agree. So the, the, I think the beauty of our current system is the friction, actually. <laughs> the beauty of the current system, because you have to be that much more engaged and interested, um, the friction means that actually only those most engaged and active have got a vote. I think that's fantastic. And I, I would recommend to every DAO to really think carefully about how they scale. Um, I think the slow start mechanism in NAN's DAO is helpful in, their, in that regard. I think um, the guts of our one person, one vote system has been really important for that. I think it's kept a really tight, engaged community. Despite having tens of thousands of nodes, we've had 60 people who technically have a vote, but I think probably a max of 30, 35 ever who have ever, ever voted. So I, I think it's actually has been our most engaged people. But I'm, what I'm saying is one of the reasons we have the current system, one of the reasons actually we do have such a small group of voters um, is because of the friction and actually because of the lack of automation. And that feels to be not a good argument for the system. Yeah. Can I just jump in here? Yeah. I, I just want to say that friction is a useful tool when starting out a DAO. Uh, we were intentional about that. You want to make sure that only your most core stakeholders have a say because it makes the DAO safer as you bootstrap, especially in a one person, one vote system. Like if we just opened the floodgates, we would have just a mob of people that don't have any context on the project, aren't in the inner workings of the ecosystem. So friction was intentional, but at a certain point as we scale, we need to start to lift that fr friction if we want to welcome more people in our ecosystem to start engaging more. Uh, at a certain point, it just becomes a barrier that actually has a chilling effect on further participation in our core ecosystem. So I just wanted to add that. And then I felt like the, the, the second question wasn't fully answered. So at, at another point there, which is uh, absolutely not. We don't think that we don't assume that people will, cannot wear multiple hats. Uh, one of the core ideas in our governance uh, upgrade uh, in one of the earlier posts was this idea of people being three dimensional. Uh, people can be simultaneously node operators and also uh, contributors. Uh, and even gateways, um, and that those people deserve to have uh, a say within each of those stakeholder classes, uh, because uh, they will they wear multiple hats and they have uh, different well-rounded perspectives based on those hats that they wear. Um, so that is a core part of this, and and we would expect that people can uh, can vote in a staker house uh, uh, using a stake. Uh, and also have uh, one vote within the one person, one vote house if they are also actively contributing in an individual capacity. Yeah. I'm going to ask my third question, Jack. Um, how important do you think it is for somebody voting to understand what they're voting for? Uh, I think it would be ideal. I think it's unrealistic, but it would be ideal. Um, we see, like, the, like this is why a lot of other DAOs do delegation. Um, uh, they think that uh, it would enable people to delegate to more informed participants. Uh, it is flawed, though, because you see a lot of DAOs, uh, it becomes popularity contest. Um, and uh, there's, there's various professional delegates out there, uh, which doesn't really make sense, because uh, how can you be a delegate in dozens of DAOs? The whole point is that you're supposed to be more knowledgeable uh, of the context. So. Yeah, I think it's important. It's an ideal. Uh, it's something that we can strive for, uh, and we can try to educate people and build processes to help people become informed. Uh, but obviously, it's, we can't be uh, we can't be perfect about it. Aren't we a delegate right now? Um, are, aren't we delegating to PNF for the most part? I, I, you know, have the 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 good fortune of being you know able to like reach out to a, a lot of the the voters because I've been around. And um, you you have to, and and some of these things get complex. I mean, it 
you know, honestly, and this is just a rhetorical question, how many people on this call have read through every single one of those seven uh, like posts and the comments uh, for, for what's being changed right now? Um, the votes in favor are a delegate to you uh, with all due respect, you know, and, and that's an awesome thing because we trust you, but we have a delegate system right now and it is going to be a popularity contest um, just objectively. I mean, is a vote in favor of funding Grove to build Shannon, a delegate to Shannon, or a vote in favor of Lean Pocket, a delegate to Nodis for building Lean Pocket? Like at the end of the day, what you're describing not, is that not, you, not, you every, del- single, not, not you every single vote, because some some are more more complex or less complex. But if, if you reach out to, I don't want to call anybody out, but I, uh, um, you know, like I've, I've had a couple of conversations where uh, voters have said, um, I'm not voting because I haven't had the time to to really understand this. And so when I see like the voter attrition, I can't help asking the question, you know, why is that because some people are being responsible voters or is that because they're disengaged and, and not contributing anymore? Um, I, and, and these are like the kinds of questions that I, I think ha- haven't really been addressed. Um, anyway. So you. Uh, on that point, uh, you had a couple more questions that you wanted to be addressed. Um, so the eighty twenty split, uh, what we, where did that come from? Uh, it it comes from the acknowledgement that we cannot uh, we cannot define the perfect split. Uh, we could also arbitrarily say it should be fifty fifty, because that's a clean fifty fifty. Uh, it's a clean split. And stakers have uh, equal right to a say as builders. Like we could have gone with that path as well, but that is less safe. Uh, that that is uh, that opens up the possibility that um, uh, we'll see dynamics play out that we didn't foresee, um, and we'll be um, more at the whim of the staker house. Um, so twenty percent is has been selected as a smaller, safer percentage that we can start with. And observe, and then calibrate over time. There's a core idea within this governance system of modularity and iteration. That's why we've introduced several parameters that can be calibrated, and we've tried to build a system that is very easy to upgrade. We can easily issue new credentials. We can adjust uh, the algorithm that calculates votes. We can say square root is not good enough. We need to calculate stake a different way. So. That's the reasoning behind the eighty twenty. Is we need to start somewhere. Uh, it's essentially an MVP uh, split uh, that we know to be safer. Um, uh, that we can that we can then evolve from. And then you also asked about the UI uh, and about how to understand um, uh, based on how many people voted um, what the what the outcome is. So I'm I'm posting. Um, a message in the chat with you tagged uh, with some details on this and a link um, so that you can take a look at that async and that other people can as well. Uh, but essentially, uh, the snapshot interface calculates the aggregate for you. So if the, if you trust that everything, that the calculation is um, is uh, is running correctly, the percentage that is shown on snapshot will be correct, and you can also verify that uh, by looking at the data. Um, we, I would expect that the data will also be visualized by explorers like Pocket Scan, uh, and then we also do have the ability to build our own custom interfaces uh, as future upgrades to the system as we learn a bit more about uh, the types of data that people are looking for uh, that we want to surface within the core governance interface. I'm going to go back to my, my ask for a no vote right now is just to buy more time because we won't get through the questions in this call. But the, the other question that I have is, um, who are we trusting to make sure that that vote, the algorithm is happening? You said, you know, as long as we trust that the algorithm is happening, who specifically do we need to trust? I mean, the code is all uh, like, the algorithm is is all public, uh, and every vote has a result that you can cross check against the algorithm. So anyone can verify. And but, actually, but just like, just like on the person who 
on the personhood verification, for example, like who are we trusting? How do we know that those are real people and, and not AI bots? Five, five years ago, uh, the the AI expert experts in the AI community thought that AGI was at least 80 years away. Today, most believe that it's you know going to happen before 2030. And there's already examples of AI assistants that can navigate very, very complex processes. Um, you know, just, I mean, just Google like Devin or some of the other stronger current versions. It's not hard to imagine, you know, it, it, an AI being able to navigate this process. And if it's 100% anonymous, who are we trusting to make sure that that's working? So, uh, I'll actually jump in here. Um... So, so I, I guess I, I do have faith, given what I've seen and understood from the Gitcoin passport, that it is a lot more secure than our current system. Our current so system we're trusting is, Gitcoin. Yeah, we're, we're trusting the Gitcoin system, but right right now we're trusting Discord, right? And it's it's not verifiable. Um, we have a channel okay. where people. Yeah, I understand. Gitcoin. But we're trusting a third party, is what you're saying, right? We're trusting a third party that is obviously modular can be swapped out. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a hell of a lot more secure than the current system. Yeah. I think I think that's undeniable. So I, I guess the other risk, I think, which Jack touched upon earlier, right, is um, it's actually wasn't always so clear to me until you really dive into it. I think it was even kind of um, chatting about it last week because you sometimes forget about these. But um, everything in Discord is it can be amended by admins. Um, we, we have no history of how people got their voting power um, and also you know, if there's a hack, people could get this stuff. People could technically, um, you know, to, to, all you have to do is fake a picture. All you have to do is produce one picture and get enough people yeah, to thumbs up. But if, said, if, if, AI, if, AI, if AI, if AI can fake a, a vote, it'll be a lot harder to reel that back in. You know, if, if you get a thousand new voters and you can't verify any of them and, and the current system says that like the vote's gonna win, it, it'll always win. You, there will be no way to put that genie back in the bottle. Let's. Sorry, let's I, I, I don't think I'm fully, fully, fully getting it because you can you can verify with the, with the new system. You'll be able to verify everyone who has voting power. With the current system, it's it, it's a lot more open to attack. So yeah, yeah. sorry, I don't think that last. You won't be able to verify that they're actual humans. You will. Sorry, take... can I jump in for a second? Can I jump in for a second? The the system yeah. doesn't allow anybody who gets citizenship to vote automatically. I think. They still need to be able to be contributing as a builder. So there's there is a step of citizenship, but then there's the like verification that you've created or worked on something within the system. So it's not just like a thousand bots are going to be able to jump in and start voting. I understand, um, but but there are agents right now that can make GitHub updates and commits and pull requests and write code and and do all of the things that humans are doing. I mean, I'm I'm guessing everybody on this call is is probably aware of that, and there's there, there's some people that are, you know, I I know very aware of that. Um, so um, I'm I'm not saying it's it's uh, bots. Oshans Oshansky and Cole would have to approve that PR to the protocol. And that brings up a bigger question of like, you know, if they're doing work on the network, I'm 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 not there yet, right? I don't necessarily believe that AI should get um the same rights humans do, but like. They've they've made a contribution to the network that is valuable in some way, and so I'm not I'm not clear on if we wouldn't want them to vote. Like that feels like a moral or ethical question, and not a so not so if for here. so if I controlled a thousand AI agents that could do this stuff, you'd be okay with a thousand votes that I control or I oversee, even though I'm not doing the work. I understand I think, you're suggesting someone is monitoring and actively using all of these AI agents to do the work. I, I think it's a, it's yeah, a false. I, I, I think we're getting. Because the current sorry, system I, can be filled in the same way, I guess. But yeah, sorry, jump in. Yeah, I, I, I think we're, we're getting a little off, uh, off track here because, I mean, I agree with you, Steve, that um, with where, you know, AI is going, there's likely going to need to be future iterations um, that, uh, you know, have other uh, verification systems potentially, um, or, you know, maybe we add another step beyond uh, uh, Gitcoin Passport. Um, from my own experience, I believe Gitcoin Passport is a very viable solution for right now. Is it future-proof? I wouldn't want to say that it's future-proof, but it's hell of a lot better than what really any 
current DAO that I've really seen has, um, or uh, or even our current system. So uh, I don't think anyone is against the idea of upgrading the system in the future. I think for right now, I personally have used uh, the Gitcoin Passport. I talked with the devs to figure out like how uh, it worked actually in public channels. I, I, I this was just completely on my own. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a good system. It's a very, it's a novel system. That's uh, very cool. And it respects people's privacy. Um, I personally think that that's plenty good of an, of a solution right now. Um, uh, again, you're totally right that we need to stay on our toes and things of that nature. And this is even where validators, uh, validators themselves or different on-chain parties would actually, uh, be because uh, from my understanding actually validators can be a uh, um, uh, or you know on-chain parties could actually be the stopgap to some kind of exploit inside of the uh, you know third party you know uh, in, into a system that requires third parties um, because it's the still other thing to, at the end of the day. The other thing to add here is um, this proposal actually includes, so as part of the modular system, we have this idea that parameters can be delegated uh, to uh, an entity such as PNF uh, to be adjusted dynamically based on a certain pre-agreed rules. A perfect example of this is the um, inflation uh, parameter adjustments that we do, the service of state weight multiplier adjustments that we do. Uh, these parameters have been delegated within certain boundaries. Um, one of the uh, this one of the parts of this proposal is to delegate the minimum humanity score to PNF uh, to be able to adjust uh, 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 freely. Um, so right now it's fifteen. Um, it could go anywhere. It could go up to thirty, uh, so on. Essentially, that determines how many different stamps and points someone has to get to be deemed to be a human um, uh, in the system. Uh, and this would be delegated as a safety mechanism so that if people suspected that some funny business was going on with Gitcoin Passport, that people were too easily achieving the score of 15 and that it was sibilable, um, that we could actually adjust that number up to make it more difficult. Or if there was a really uh, big problem, we could in increase that number um, uh, uh, to a much higher level, and then this would give us the time to actually find an alternative solution um, and implement that solution. So um, we have mechanisms built in for safety. Um, I don't believe we will need them, um, but those do exist. But wouldn't those have to be voted on? And wouldn't at that point the, the civils already be voting? I mean, yes, you're assuming that by that we, we basically uh, didn't react in time, that we that we allowed a civil onboarding to happen uh, over a period of time without responding. Uh, and also you're ignoring the fact that the Gitcoin passport itself does not grant any voting power. It is a gate on voting. Uh, it literally works as a gate. You go into snapshot yeah. and you have to verify your passport before you're allowed to cast a vote. But to actually have any voting power, you need to stake pocket, you need to stake rat pocket, you need to send relays to the network as a gateway, and you need to do one of these contributions uh, to prove that you're uh, an active contributing stakeholder in the ecosystem. So uh, the larger question is not whether you think Gitcoin Passport is 100% uh, civil proof by itself, but whether you believe the set of credentials and the requirement to stake pocket are themselves in combination with the passport uh, uh, comfortably civil proof? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's ex that, that's exactly the, the the question and the exactly the concern. Like right now, um, in, in a hypothetical, like I agree with Shane that like I've spent some time looking at the system and and, and a couple of other systems. You know, limited because I've got limited time, but the it looks really good. And I think it will serve today. What I what I don't see is like like a hypothetical if that happens, and it's you know it, it's not a crazy leap of imagination anymore. Um, like how does that get dealt with? Like we'd have to fork the system, you know, because there is no safety hatch. And I read through the governance change, uh, you know, the the um, constitutional changes, 
And and these are again, I'm, I'm I'm just asking for a no vote just so we have a little bit more time now that people are talking about it to just consider this stuff. I mean, you guys have spent so much time putting this together. Isn't it worth a little bit more time to make sure that it's right? You, you know, there's lots of good pieces here. We can get more people um, voting right away with simply a vote, just you know, just like you did, Jack. With um, I think it was a uh, PIP eight. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I think it, uh, th that was coordinate, but uh, like PIP five. Uh, you know, like we already have a mechanism to add a lot more voters today, and I think the 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 technology stack that you're proposing could make the automation happen really easily. It's the 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 two parts that I think need more thought are the 100% you know an anonymous in in my opinion, and and definitely the 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 waiting you know that moves away from one person one vote. I think those are the 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 two that the the community should have time to wrap their head around minimally and, and discuss more. And maybe just a week or two weeks, I don't think we're talking about a lot of time, but um, you know, it, it, the only way to get there is a no vote, it, it, to have a little bit more time. We are five after, but I'll keep the call going if there's interest in that and people are capable of staying on. Um, yeah, I think if, as we kind of said, um, I think it'd be really good anyone who does need more time and wants to, to, to vote no. I think that's absolutely the right way to vote. Um, we don't have a power, at least as far as I know, to stop any vote mid-flight. Um, and in, sorry, and sorry, Steve, can you, you remind me, so your key concerns or areas that you'd like to unpack or spend a bit more time on um, is, what, is, is one, of course, the staking house, right? You want, you want to kind of discuss what that looks like um, and maybe we can unpack some of the things I mentioned around also scaling up the current system if you automate it and what that also looks like. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, that was, that was, that was the second one that you, you mentioned again. Yeah, I, I, I think like given that we're over on time, maybe the thing to do would be um, like, what's an alternative version of this proposal looks like, you know, and, and I, 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 I think it's, it's like so close the, the there's just too many moving parts. Um, I think it, it could be simplified with a proposal that's really similar to um, a, 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 to PIP number five. Um, you know, PIP, it, that was May twenty fifth of twenty one, but it was it was a proposal to make a vote easier, uh, and and we can do the same thing for whatever underserved groups we think are are out there, and and that can be done like in days like it's already been de defined within this to immediately like get more people on a path to become voters i think the second thing that we could do is go right to the tech stack that you know that's being proposed to um get coin and to uh um the uh, my gateway xyz and and say you know hey how do we automate the existing process we'll vote for new paths We'll get people on those paths, and you know we'll we'll have voters immediately. I think I I think those are the spirit of the the original, uh, at least as I read it, Jack. And tell me if 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 I'm wrong. But when I read the you know the original version of this, I was I was excited because I thought that the process for getting a vote was ridiculously convoluted, you know, when I got a vote or, or, or ridiculously hard, but you, you sold me uh, that, you know, that was necessary. And I, you know, and I agreed and I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm also in agreement that we need more voters now. It, 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 we, we, we can do that with all, all of these other things happening all at once. Yeah, I think the friction was necessary at the beginning. Uh, to bootstrap a safe DAO uh, with enough people in it that are active to be resistant to takeover. Uh, I would say that we are there now, and it's time to start uh, reducing that friction and onboarding more people. Um, so so that's, that, that is one point that I would make there. Um, I think part of reducing that friction is moving to a more scalable automated tech stack. So I feel pretty strongly whatever people feel about um, uh, the sticker house or expiry or other um, uh, par parts of this upgrade that seem to be a little bit more 
uh, controversial or, or make people more uncomfortable, um, at the very least, uh, this needs to be an upgrade to the tech stack uh, that will automate onboarding, streamline onboarding, and it will also make it easier for us to issue new credentials and iterate on the system. Um, so I feel very strongly about that. I, I think it's uh, it, it would be ludicrous for us to keep using the Discord identity solution, which we just ha hacked together because we were previously using Bright ID and Bright ID wasn't serving our needs. So we needed an, an interim solution uh, uh, that we could uh, do run ourselves until an alternative scalable solution came out. And that alternative scalable solution is now here. It is Gitcoin Passport. Uh, there is nothing better out there. Um, I, yeah, I agree. I agree, Jack. And I would vote for that tomorrow. I, I, I would. I would ask that there was something added to the Constitution in case of a civil attack. You know, some sort of like escape escape hatch. And I would even vote that, like under that circumstance, you know, PNF would would have the authority to like cancel all votes or. or do we we need some way of like if that were to happen, you know what's the contingency plan, uh, and 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 there's I think a, a couple of different ways we could go at it, but I think those are simple. Like and everybody would would I, I can't imagine anybody saying that like uh, they're against having more people voting or they're against an automated system. Uh, or, or even that, um, like that, that Gitcoin and and uh, uh, the the current the tech stack proposed is is the wrong tech stack. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I'm I'm just saying that like let's take those out and vote for those tomorrow so that we can get this thing going. Vote no for well, this one. I... We have no time. Vote yes on a revised version that is the tech stack, and and then let's have a healthy discussion around the other stuff i think um i think those are all important points and i i go back and forth like on the the uh like anonymous voting i see both sides of that argument that's a really hard one for me like you know like in this case i can't imagine anybody on the pnf team voting against this pip because of that visibility because who would vote against your your peers and your boss like so in that case i would love to see anonymous but there are also risks with that, so I'm I'm not even settled myself on which way I would go with that. But but those I think could be separated in, into separate proposals and worked through in a healthy way without hindering the the the, the progress on this. So I do agree uh, that you know there there can be uh, we can approach this in an iterative fashion. Um, the the idea of you know having a back uh, you know, a, a backup plan for, uh, you know, for the cred system uh, for in case of a civil attack. I don't think that needs to be included right now. Um, I, that's why I don't think like, like that's an area that we need to stop everything until we do that. Cause that could just be added that that's a great little amendment addendum, you know, uh, you know, and, you know, people like yourself or others, you know, that can all be scoped out. I don't think that that needs to stop uh, progression now. Um, and so if, yeah, would, if, if we, if we, okay, okay. If we agree that that's something that we can, uh, that we can amend and iterate on, that's fantastic. Then that just comes down to then the tech stack itself. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of objections to the tech stack itself, uh, which is great. Um, and, and then you're arguing, basically, it seems like mostly of what you're arguing is hold off on the waiting part of the weighted system. Just just do the the tech stack now, and then do the weighted system later. Um, I my I mean I would prefer just since the weighted system has already been talked about so much, and I understand I understand your point of you know let's you know talk a little bit more about it, which is I'm glad that we're having this conversation now. But I personally would prefer them just to happen, so we just have a new baseline uh, system that we can start utilizing i don't think it I, I don't think that there would be benefit to changing part of the system now and then putting a focus on trying to get more people into that system and then trying to make another major change in that system down the road i just like if we're upgrading let's upgrade 
And so if we're going to go with a philosophical approach, let's figure out that philosophical approach and then execute. So if within the weighted staking, I think audibly like this, instead of back and forth on the forum is the best way to, to do it. And so, I mean, I would wonder, or I want to, I, and to be fair, I also, uh, I was out for most of this month. So I'm actually catching up. I have not read everything on the forum. Uh, so, but I would be open to just hearing what part about the, uh, fr from my understanding, it's mainly the, the stake, um, the weighted stake is the, really the controversial part here, and especially the staking house. Um, what, what's controversial specifically about the staking house? Where are the issues there? And then yeah. see if we can just get to the bottom of that so that we could actually move forward with just a, a system. Yeah, I mean, it was actually one of your comments, Shane, that that like peaked my or like got me thinking most. And, and the the comment was I, from you, who, I, you know, I have a lot of respect for. But you know more about this stuff than me. But your comment was, and I'm paraphrasing, but I can get it exactly. Is like, I'm not sure I fully get it, but I trust you guys. Was sort of the 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 comment, and that's the part that I'm like, ah, oh. you know, in something like. The, the the question I posed earlier with the new system, you know, if we have a proposal and 51 people vote for it and 49 people vote against it, does it pass? I can't answer that, you know, let alone a question like, you know, if, if you've got a thousand people and 700 of them are like in the, uh, the, the staker house and 300 are in the builder house, you know, could they, could they force a vote one way or other? Like, and, and there's, uh, uh, well, that goes down to the constitution though. So if, if you have an issue with the constitution, like if you want to have some, uh, you know, some other voting requirement that yeah, majority it's, isn't it's actually the majority, it's the weights. Then, uh, yeah. yeah, but the weights, the weights isn't anyways, the weights doesn't deal with this vote right now. Uh, like the weights is oh sorry I'm, saying... I'm confused i thought you were talking about this vote like what if this vote passes now it, and i'm just saying well that's just the constitution as it stands now so i'm no no, I'm confused no. what we can do about that no there's lots of constitutional changes if this in this pip um so right. like, i would definitely encourage you to read through those but the like the the i i just think we just break them up like let's vote for the new like a new system that automates the existing vote the existing process uh your your point like why wouldn't you just implement everything now wouldn't it be better to have more people weigh in on something as important as a weighted system why don't we we focus on getting more people on board as voters which i you know i, I think everybody agrees is is the main thing and and then we'll have more people able to think this stuff through and we'll we'll get a better result it will get a better outcome as a result i personally and maybe i'm the weird one here i don't care very much about trying to get numbers up like number goes up that's that's better collective knowledge i've been in dows i was in dows before uh before pocket where people collectively made terrible decisions uh and so i so that's where i do appreciate the uh you know putting i do appreciate that this is putting weight behind people that are building uh and and the philosophical reason is because i believe that people that are like actively building where part of their business their day is invested in the ecosystem they're a much they tend to think about things much more deeply. They tend to understand nuances of things that get lost in crowds. And so yeah. I'm not against crowd voting at all. Yeah. Like I absolutely not. So I'm not against any of that. Um, I, where I don't, I just don't see like, oh man, we need to have a bigger DAO right now before we can make a, you know, reasonable assessment on weighted uh, voting because I believe yeah. the people that are already invested now really are the ones who would probably understand the best of the weighted voting system and new voters coming in they wouldn't have you know they you know they, they wouldn't have uh, uh, something material to add to this so 
That's yep. why I don't have a problem with dealing with it now before trying to just get a lot more voters in the system right off the bat. Um, I yep. like the idea of doing this as a philosophical yep. full, you know, full package instead of just well, trying to do well, one my, thing and then add the philosophical side in later. Yeah, well, my, my, my thinking was that, um, and I agree with you, actually, I don't think like more is better, but but most of what I've been reading about the proposal is that the objective is to get what's been termed as like disenfranchised people in. And in most of those that are that are referenced when that term is used would be like pocket news who I see on here and, and others. These aren't new voters. These are th these are people that should have a vote now that have invested a ton of time in this and, and, and understand it. And, and their votes would be valuable, in my opinion. Uh, and I, I think that we're not talking about adding thousands of people that don't know what's going on in the short term. We're talking about giving a vote to the people that have been referenced in these proposals as being disenfranchised right now. Well, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, with Pocket News or any voter, it, you know, just like yourself, you, you've been one actually bringing a lot of good feedback, a lot of thoughts uh, to the forum. Just, just objecting on the forum greatly impacts voter, uh, voter perception. And so I don't think there's, I, I, I would be hesitant to say that unless someone has a vote, they have no say. I, I don't think that's the case at all. I, I do think there's plenty of ways for people to participate. And if there are this, uh, if there are people that feel like they have no say, then say you have no say. <laughs> you know, like I, that's why, that's why I, it, 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 instead of trying to think of a solution for someone else's situation, if they just represent their situation to say, hey, I don't like this proposal, but, uh, but it, I don't it, have a vote or something like that, that I'd say just, isn't that what Jack and Dermot have been saying for the, I mean, I can, I can point you to references of, 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 of screen names that they say, like, these people have been excluded. And so I'm, I'm assuming that those people reached out to them. Well, that's what the new system's about. That's what this new but, system is about. And it's about bringing them on. But why wouldn't we want them to be involved in this part of the vote as well? I, I can because jump in here. I, I, I don't have an objective of people being a part. I'm just saying having those people speak up. If because because I how I see it is we're operating off of what like my perception is I'm operating on what I've been seeing. So I understand and I philosophically understand that there have been people that have been a part of the ecosystem that haven't had a vote. Uh and that absolutely sucks. Let's get them onboarded. That doesn't mean that we have to uh completely stop the process in my mind. I don't believe we have to completely reset things on all the research, all the discussion that has happened over the course of many months uh, with all the information that has been published uh, that we have to put all that on because uh, you know, material, there will be material difference if, uh, you know, if, if we onboard these voters right now. I, if I felt like there was gonna be material difference, then that would be a completely different, then I think we would actually have a discussion, but right now it's kind of theoretical. Like people aren't saying that, oh, I have a issue with this, but I don't have a vote, so I can't you know, do anything about it. So that's where I feel like we're kind of operating in a, in not a just objective, like, okay, do they have a problem with it or do they not have a problem with it? And yeah, more, we're- More reason to delay this vote. What's that? I said, that's, that's more reason to delay the vote because if if you don't feel like we're operating with objective viewpoints, we need to consider them. No, no, then they need to speak up. That the viewpoint has to be presented. Like they, they has it has to be spoken. And so I'm saying we're operating on what has been objectively brought. And I and I understand that our voter system has been limited. No one's doubting that. But saying but saying that the I don't know. I just don't personally think that we have to do this slow burn. Uh, or this, this super slow approach to a system that has been talked about a long time. I mean, I have been reading the, the things ever since the beginning. I still have some issues with it because uh, even the, uh, the recent post, I was digging in this morning and I wanted to kind of, uh, there, there were parts of it that um, uh, where you're supposed to be able to go 
into, I guess, my gateway and use their Explorer to look up certain models or something like that, uh, I wasn't able to find any information. So I'm, so I'm actually not like go vote yes on this. I'm still trying to figure it out. So I'm not against the delaying, you know, potentially delaying this or something like that. If you know, or if it just doesn't pass, do it again in a a, a more, you know, uh, with more information, more data, potential tweaks. I'm totally for all that. Um, I just the concept of we need to just do part of it now, but not the philosophical other aspect of it that has been widely discussed. Uh, that's why I just don't. I don't think we need to do that now. Like, okay, I, I'm sorry. Then I, forward. I yeah, I agree. Yeah, and then I, just I, I to think, quickly jump in. I, I agree. I don't think those additional new people will be a panacea. I think all for delaying, taking more time, and to really distill down and dry out the issues and if, if it becomes the staking aspect aspect is the um the biggest sticking point let's discuss that and get comfortable and reach some consensus we could break it up right but um i would probably be up for maybe maybe we have a longer voting period if we're going to get to the next stage and have a 14-day period um so we can actually okay everyone's clear with the tech stack they're happy with this um whatever we agree will then be updated in the constitution i'm, I'm happy to break it up i'm sure there's other people that may have some views on that but I don't know if that is the the panacea here. It feels like we just need to resolve on, you know, what are these sticking points? What are we unsure about? It feels to me, it sounds like the staking house and the waitings. Um, so it's kind of fleshing that out, really making sure we're clear on the the pros and cons and what this looks like at scale. Because um, it feels like we're pretty close. Um, so yeah, so I, I'm, I'm all for taking more time. But, um, and I guess I'm agnostic to how we break it up, but I, I don't think it's a panacea to say, let's vote for one and then the other if we can do it all at once, but make sure everyone has enough time to review everything before they vote. So maybe that does mean whenever we do go to vote, we give 14 days, for example. That seems to be reasonable to me, but I'd be keen for other people's voices. I mean, this is why we're super fortunate now, because we do have objective people on PNF. It's worth taking more time to, to make sure that this, this process works. There's been so much time put into it, and I agree, it's very close. The, we just need to vote no on this, Dermot. And I heard you say that you're for that. If we um, can like break it up, if there's no way to extend the voting period, which is what you said in the comments, then we vote no and immediately come back with a, a revision that we can vote on for the automation part, which I heard Jax uh, basically say like that's the main thing. And I agree, like it's it shouldn't all fall on him. Uh, it, it's too, it's just way too manual the process, but um, if you go back, Jack, and read some of your your early uh, um, proposals, I mean they're still good. <laughs> I really believe that. Uh, it, it's just the auto. It's just it, it's just not scalable. But like, let's focus on making it scalable first, and then we can iterate through the other things. Yes, sorry. Just I do, I do want to close that point out because I've actually mentioned that in the comments a few times. I. I, I think I would prefer at least to have this discussion as a community and to figure out where other people have concerns, because if we don't introduce a staker house, as I mentioned, I think the current system doesn't scale very well and ends up looking really strange at scale with, say, nodes who on the current pathway don't have to do too much. But because the, so there's so much friction involved, we've ended up some really engaging and impactful voters. However, if we actually remove that friction, we could end up with a lot of people who don't have to do too much and get the same voting power as everyone else. Um, and I think that's when you realize a bicameral system that gives voting power to those who are truly driving impact in certain ways with some kind of expiry based on, you know, the bigger things get longer uh, and so on and so forth. And then separately, anyone who is driving value to the protocol as a core user, as a node, as a gateway can be included in a separate house. So we can put some guardrails around how much power that is. I think that is really important. Um, because I think this doesn't scale uh, on a social level if we don't include that. So I think happy to have more of that debate to make sure those nuances are fleshed out. I, I would be very wary of just saying um, a new tech stack solves all the issues. Um, it's really important, um, but the, the, the scale piece has a technical element as well as a social element for me. But yeah, something to add to that. Um, and then a point just to clarify on the automation. Uh, on the staker house, in my view, and, and I was... 100% uh, for one person, one vote, and super against uh, any kind of um, token voting or, or what have you. 
Um, what has uh, changed my perspective is this simple idea that if we believe that uh, the the people that earn a vote uh, going through the node path, uh, which for the most part, like ninety percent of that vote is uh, is able to be earned just by running a node uh, in normal circumstances, you have to add a little couple things in, like help another node runner or submit a a, a docs update or whatever, but. 90% of the vote can be earned just by running a node. If we believe that that's a legitimate vote, then we should also agree that having um, a staker house that grants uh, voting power to any node runners that are staked um, uh, directly, uh, uh, that we should also agree that that is, uh, is a legitimate vote and that, th that we are enfranchising stakeholders. Essentially, what we would be doing by introducing the staker house is um, making it easier for us to get to a point where every node runner is represented in some form because it is easy for them to tell the system that they are running those nodes. And then we also have the capability with credentials and some of the extra rules, uh, uh, the design space that I introduced to add extra requirements if we decide to, uh, like uh, they must be staked for a minimum period of time before it activates, uh, or um, they must also serve X relays, we can introduce other data points uh, uh, to balance that if we so wish. We didn't want to go down that path because we felt like it would be further complicating the system, but we have that design space available to us. Uh, so this is less about uh, going back on our vision of one person, one vote, uh, and, and going with the way every other DAO does it with token voting, and this is more about recognizing that we have these core stakeholders uh, that are uh, not represented in the best way for them, and that this would be a more elegant way to get more representation from that stakeholder class. Um, so I, that's why I feel pretty strongly that a staker house makes a lot of sense, but I am open to uh, giving more time for that to be debated uh, and for, for the nuances to be discussed. Um, on the automation point, this doesn't uh, pushing forward an initial uh, proposal that only covers the automation doesn't necessarily mean maintaining the current set of trophies uh, because uh, there's a question of how does how do those trophies actually get represented in the new credential system? How can they be uh, measured and automated and so on? Um, so. I am completely, I'm open to unbundling the current proposal and pushing forward specific pieces like replace the trophies with this, replace verification with Gitcoin Passport, et cetera, uh, Staker House. But if we were replacing the trophies with an automated system, it would likely also involve uh, changing which credentials uh, are actually being recognized. Uh, so that will need to be a point of discussion as well. I mean, I think that's fair. I, I, I did go through like the new um, quest system and I think it's super cool. I mean, I, I ran into some issues that like were minor um, and, you know, like, but, but overall, like versus, you know, constantly pinging you, Jack, hey, I did this thing. <laughs> can you give me a, can you give me a trophy? Like, I, obviously, like that doesn't scale at all. Um, so, yeah, I mean, changing the, the trophies to the new system, I think, makes perfect sense. And everything about the automation makes perfect sense. Is there, uh, I, on the forum, uh, whether, whether Steve or, or someone has someone put up specifically their objections to the weighting or how the weighting is operated or is most of the discussion around because uh, I will I will say this, uh, you know, early on when they were presenting research uh, and I hadn't been able to and, and I wasn't fully understanding how it was all going to come together. That's where the I'm trusting, uh, you know, I'm trusting PNF to kind of bring this all together uh, because I wasn't fully understanding. it. Um, granted, I, mean, yeah. I believe when that post originally uh, like the original post was a very different iteration than what I feel like we have now. So I do feel like I have an understanding and conception on, on what this is. And, uh, you know, I, the one, the one thing that I don't have yet, which, 
uh, it might be a user error on my side, is being able to see the example because they did give a notion page that was like an example where you could see like different voter profiles. I did not understand how that page works. And it also seemed like it wasn't working with my gateway. So for me, that's important for me to have that. Like, I just want to see examples, like take this user profile, what does it actually look like? Um, and so I'll probably not vote yes until I have, until I'm able to like have something that I can see those profiles. This might be, again, it might be working, it might be a user error on my side, but I haven't been able to get down to it. On the philosophical side, I, I, under, I understand the weighting and I believe I get the weighting. I, 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 the concept of the weighting, I think I fully agree with. It's just, I need to see how it plays out. And that's really because the angles come down to. Yeah, so. that, the, the, the part, I, I'm, not, I'm not against the weighting. I, I just think the weighting adds a ton of complexity. So what I did personally is I just started with um, chat GPT and Claude and, and explained like, hey, under these scenarios, we've got a thousand voters, 800 of them are in the, uh, you know, staker class that represent, you know, this much weight. I tried to take exactly what Jack had and run through different scenarios. And there's so many different ways that it could be gamed. And the parameters are gaming parameters, Jack, like clearly they're gaming parameters. The question is who's setting the rules for the game and, and how does that play out? And, and that's the part so, that I think, sorry. Sorry, go, go for it. That's the part that. Yeah, and, and that's the part I think that just needs more, more thought. It, it's like when I can use chat GPT to run a half a dozen scenarios and, and, and come up with ways to game the, the, the system that, that don't seem really hard, like it just gives me pause. Like clearly if, if, if I can do it, people, most people are a lot smarter than me could do that easily too. And it, it, it's concerning. Okay, so it's not, it's not the philosophical issue of weighted, of having some element of weight in voting, depending on people's uh, participation in the network or uh, what have you. So it's, it's simply about the current numbers that are being proposed and that there might be issues with the current numbers or you feel like there hasn't been enough research into the current numbers. Uh, I will, I, I can be adjacent to that view because I just wanna see it uh, play out. I don't know exactly what you did with ChatGPT um, like, and, and that it fully understands uh, yeah. everything. So that, you know, but all that is, is, is great research. I, I just know if I feel like I have like a model or something that I can tweak things on, right? And, and, and change things uh, to see, you know, different scenarios. That's how I've been able to identify issues in the pocket network, you know, yep. throughout my entire involvement is, is having something like that. So again, the That's current, exactly what you need. Like the if current you example learn. might be a user error on my side, but um, so it seems like we're really coming down to the issue is just the current, parameters inside that uh, inside of that um, uh, system and making sure that those are the proper perimeter or parameters that are based on uh, you know more than just guesswork but you know have maybe a little more substance in being able to model out different scenarios to see what the result would look like yeah exactly um, yeah a, a model where you could test different scenarios uh, would be is what I was doing with Chappy T. It, it wasn't like super complex, but it's just, you know, feed in like, here's how the voting system works. You know, if we have like this number of voters in the staker house, this number of voters in the builder house, this percentage of those builders have staker votes, like, you know, what would the result be? And, you know, how could this be gamed? So my, was, was what you were seeing showing that the staker house would have too much power or too little power? Uh, well, it, it, it depends on the, the um, concentration of votes and there's an overlap in the builder and staker house. So y you've got to run like multiple scenarios to understand, you know, how it could play out. Um, but 
that that's the concern is like i don't know like there's you know there there's scenarios where um like like dermot was saying like you know what if it does blow up because it's easier and there's all, all of a sudden hundreds of voters and you know most of the voters aren't really informed about what they're voting on and you brought this uh, this this up as well shane and and most of them fall in the staker house if the staker house overwhelms the, the the builder house even if a percentage of the builder house has staker votes too there's scenarios where the staker house will win and and that isn't the i i don't think that's the spirit of what we're trying to do isn't isn't the staker house and this might be again I, I, this, uh, this, this past one was uh, submitted when I was off for most of April. So isn't, when it says Staker House is 20%, doesn't that mean that that class is 20% of the overall weight versus right. 80% from the builder? So even if you have a, a thousand people suddenly join, you know, even, even, AI, yeah. Someone games the system. A, a, a million people. Yeah, even a million people in the staker house, their total vote would still cap out. Only be twenty percent. Yeah, so I don't see how that house would ever be able to take over anything at twenty yeah, percent. Because okay. they would have to win over a number, a good portion of the builder already. And they would also that's that's not even to say like the existing that they are able to capture the entire staking house. So, okay, so my understanding is correct on that. So I, I don't know if ChatGPT in your scenario, uh, Steve was taking that into account that you're, you could literally have anywhere from 100 to a million voters in there, but collectively they all would only get 20% of the actual vote. And then, you know, builders or other even stakers in the house, not part of that, uh, uh, part of that Borg collective, would uh, uh, be able to, you know, easily override because the builder house is arguably the much harder house to get into because it does require much more active participation in the protocol. Um, can I jump? Can I jump in here? Um, yeah, we ha we have done some. We've done a lot of modeling on this uh, as well. Um, uh, we have spreadsheets that Dermot linked in the chat just now. Uh, these were also posted in the forum. Uh, we ran a few scenarios. Uh, we also looked at the idea of um, uh, like what does a what does how much like how much power does a, a big player like Grove end up having across the houses? Uh, because they're obviously a gateway, so they would have some gateway power. Uh, they run some nodes, so they would have some node staking power, and they have uh, several builders within their team. Uh, what does it look like? How much power do they end up having? We've run those types of scenarios, um, uh, asking these types of questions. I think in hindsight, we could have done a better job of uh, surfacing that those models uh, and letting people engage with them and ch and test them and challenge them and ask questions. So, um, we if if this gets uh, voted against, um, we can provide more of that uh, type of uh, data and 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 let let anyone who's interested. Uh, play with those models. Um, my ask would be, uh, because we are, uh, if this gets voted against, our response will be to uh, unbundle the proposal and to try to address any concerns that were raised. And so to that end, my ask would be that if anyone does vote no, to please uh, post in the forum, very clearly articulating why you voted no. Uh, uh, I mean, other than the reason being to delay the vote, but if there's uh, specific uh, things that you're concerned about, whether those are uh, you feel like you're not you're going to lose visibility into the voting result, as Steve has mentioned, um, that's something that we could address if we knew that that was a concern. Uh, it, are, is it that you're concerned about the safety of Gitcoin Passport, or you want to have a safety hatch, uh, escape hatch? Uh, is it a staking house? Uh, is it specific weights within the staking house? Uh, do you want more uh, visibility into modeling the, the different threat scenarios and so on? Like, please be explicit about any concerns that you have. And then that that gives us 
uh, the information that we need to be able to try to address those concerns, um, whether it's whether it's providing more information or it's actually tweaking the system itself um, to to fix those concerns. Um, so yeah, just that would be that would be my only ask. And, and Dermot expressed this as well in the comments. I think that if this if this proposal gets voted against, uh, that alone is not a solution to this uh, consensus building. We also need. Uh, that other piece of that feedback that we can then respond to. So, Jack, based on what you've heard, uh, objectively, um, do you, do you think it's worth having more time to d discuss this? And and if so, should we vote no? My preference would be to for an upgrade of this nature to have a hundred percent consensus. That would be the ideal. Um, it's. Uh, it's frustrating, I think, to, I mean, it's, it's a lesson learned that, that we started the consensus building process several months ago, uh, and it's all kind of squeezed in at the end. Uh, I guess that's human nature, and, 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 and we'll, we'll know how to, to manage that process uh, uh, in the future. Um, but yeah, my preference would be that, 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 that um, every engaged stakeholder is comfortable with the upgrade and that we do what we can to get people comfortable with it. Uh, Dermot, do you have anything to share? I think you tried to jump in there. Yeah, yeah. But, but being straight up, listen, um, you're you're a valuable a member of the community, and that there are many others, and it feels like people are a little bit divided. Or as you said, Steve, some of it actually just may hey give us, I don't know if it's in a few days, a week, whatever it is. Um, I'm I'm happy to vote no after this. I I do have a doubt vote. Um, I'm happy to vote no to delay this. I think. Um, yeah, it feels like a no-brainer, right? The, the vote kind of ends, I think, sometime tomorrow morning, um, my time. So as Jack said, so please do add to the forum. Um, we can start the discussion, start the engagement. Um, and so we can really see if actually we do need to change anything or actually it's just a bit more time to review, get comfortable, maybe share some information, ask some questions. Um, the same, the whole same vote could go up again or we can make some amendments. I'm, I'm open to that again. I'd like to think, at least at this stage, most people are pretty clear around our thinking. Um, so we'd love to hear everyone else's now. And just, yeah, and I think as part of that, the concerns, if it's not just more time to be as constructive of, I'm really uncomfortable with this, I would prefer that. So we can actually then try and engage with that and kind of uh, reach some alignment around what would be the the best approach. And yeah, like, like with Jack, I would love 100% uh, alignment. I don't think we're ever going to get to that. I think that's... Uh, unrealistic but to get a, a pretty decent um alignment and like clear kind of uh, articulation of the trade-offs so some people may just disagree with the trade-offs but they understand the reasoning and think that's that's fine in my regard so yeah i'm all for that more uh, more discussion time so uh, as i said i'll vote no and please do add to the discussion uh, on the forum in the meantime and maybe we'll set up another call for this next week perhaps i very much appreciate your objectivity dermot thank you Well, this one was a, a banger, and I'm really impressed with the amount of people who've uh, hung on there. I guess we'll uh, take it to the forum from there and finalize our strategy for now, and then um, get back next week and talk some more about it. Hey, major yeah. major props to Steve. Really appreciate all the like methodical thinking. Like it's it's very encouraging, and I yeah I I feel like I got way more context and I've I've kind of narrowed down for even myself what what is kind of a it is a big proposal but I feel like I've narrowed down specifically like what my you know what are my needs uh in order to uh be able to vote yes to this kind of system so really appreciate that yeah and I, I just want to say thanks again to I, I know how much work has been put into this and 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 I'm I'm not pushing back just to be a pain in the ass. I, I really do appreciate it and uh, feel like very fortunate to, uh, you know, be part of the community, especially with the, the leadership that we've got. We're really lucky. So thank you again. Well, thanks for joining everybody. And we'll see you again uh, next week. Same time, same channel. Thanks, thanks James. James. Thanks, thanks everybody thanks, for everyone. the combo. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone.